Perhaps one of the biggest and most annoying critiques of 2013's Star Trek Into Darkness is Khan isn't Khan, or at least it's the most annoying one that I've ever heard. It seems that everyone is fixated on the fact that Ricardo Montalban is not portraying the iconic Khan Noonien Singh, which is really unfortunate because the obsession with how Khan isn't portrayed by Ricardo Montalban overshadows the fact that he is portrayed by Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch's portrayal of the character gives the character a darker edge, and yet he's somehow a more relatable character. Be honest. How many people could relate to a genetically modified bloodthirsty monster? It's like trying to relate to Indominus Rex. Now that isn't to say that Into Darkness did Khan better, because for all the improvements, there are problems. A confusing backstory, a convoluted plan, and the fact that a skinny white British guy is portraying an Indian warlord who's been genetically modified to be stronger and, in his words, better at everything. Now this video, however, is not an analysis of Star Trek Into Darkness's villain, Frankly, because if he wasn't named Khan, the movie would make a whole lot more sense. And then it hit me. What if he isn't Khan? Now, I know what you're thinking. Patton, you fool. He says he's Khan. Everyone, even old Spock, says he's Khan. Well, yes and no. And I'll tell you why it's possible that Khan isn't the villain of Star Trek Into Darkness. Now, to start off, nothing I'm going to say here can be considered canon. Uh, and canon-wise, the character portrayed as Khan is, in fact... Khan until someone says otherwise. Think of this as strictly headcanon and theory. Now let's start off with Khan's alias, John Harrison, a much more fitting name for someone who looks like Benedict Cumberbatch, almost more than Benedict Cumberbatch is. Now he falls into this role so well, in fact almost too well, and you could say it's because, well, he's a spy, but he isn't. Khan was a warlord who would have no reason to have an alias, or have any training or experience in using one. Well, you could say now that he was trained to use it by Section 31, and that's entirely possible. Sure, he could have been, but why couldn't it work the other way? Why couldn't Section 31 train someone else to use the alias of Khan Noonien Singh? It seems to me that well, he seems slightly less comfortable with the name Khan. He's far more rigid, reserved, still psychotic but less natural, except when he's killing. That point fits Khan's personality, but he's a much more flamboyant person than we see on screen. Don't believe me? Watch Star Trek II. It's also interesting that he works for Section 31. Section 31 operatives we've seen are much darker, more rigid, and psychotic. And they even dress all in black. We also know that he's following Section 31's, and specifically Admiral Marcus's orders. But this seems a bit strange. Yes, I know they have his people in torpedoes, but they're torpedoes he designed. And by the way, as far as I'm aware, the original Khan was not a weapons designer. And he has, assuming he is the original Khan, an ingenious intellect. In Star Trek II, he and his men took over a Federation starship and were able to take it into battle against the Enterprise with great efficiency, with minimal time to familiarize themselves with the controls and systems. It seems with this intelligence that he could have gotten his people out of those torpedoes. He also seems for the most part to do exactly what Section 31 wants him to do until about two-thirds into the movie, when he no longer has any orders from Section 31. The last point is how Old Spock knows him. If you recall, New Spock asked Old Spock if he knew of Khan, and didn't ask specifically about the Khan they were fighting. Old Spock could only speak from past experiences, i.e., what is seen in the original series and in Star Trek II. So Old Spock does not confirm that Khan on The Vengeance is the same Khan from Star Trek II. So that leaves three possibilities. The first is that it is Khan and it's just an inaccurate portrayal, which is what I think the filmmakers would have said. Second is that he is a Section 31 operative uh, trained to believe like Khan and use his name. Third is a little more sinister. In Star Trek Discovery, we see it's possible to change someone's personality. Now I'm going to issue a spoiler alert for the first season of Star Trek Discovery right now. For what good it does, considering we're on like season 4 by the time this video will have gone up. But hey, I gave you a warning, so... You can't say anything. Got it? Good. Now... We see in Star Trek Discovery that the Klingons imprint over Vok's personality that of Ash Tyler. Well, it's well known that the Klingons are not as technologically advanced as the Federation. They're close, but they're not quite there. 
So if they could do it, conceivably, why couldn't Starfleet? It's not that hard to believe that they could, but would find the moral implications too grave to take part in. However, Section 31 would definitely do it. Look what they did to Bashir in DS9. So, it's possible that whomever it is we see in the movie, either willingly or unwillingly, had Khan's personality put in over top his own, or a version of Khan's personality specifically designed by Section 31. Now, I have only circumstantial evidence uh, for this theory, uh, as the canon hasn't stated anything other than that he is supposed to be the same Khan, so don't quote anything I say here as fact. Uh, this is just something to think about. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like Khan as Khan and Into Darkness, or do you think there is more to it than just the name? Let me know. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, if comments are turned on. Uh, follow me on all the social media. If you want to see more about this theory, like maybe develop how they would have known about Khan, or why they would have decided to do a thing revolving around Khan, but using one of their own operatives, Section 31 operatives, that is, uh, or just more theory of, you know, sci-fi and anime in general, uh, let me know via social media, or if the comments are turned on in this video there. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow me on all the social media stuff, and I'll uh, see you all in the next video. Bye.